each of you signs up the papers and get back on the table. Uh, no, no, sir. Please sign in. I know you're applicants, but please, just for the record, yes, sir. sign in. In this case, it doesn't make that much difference, but in some cases where we got a big crowd, we need them signed in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is the October meeting for the Dallas Brown County Board of Appeals. Uh, if everyone would please turn your phones off so we don't have distractions and interruptions. <coughs> Let me explain how we operate so you can follow and keep up with us. I will call each case by case number and case name. Staff will come to the lectern, give us the <coughs> report for us to take under advisement as far as what's being requested. We've already got paperwork, but they will present it so that everybody hears the same thing. Once they have, <coughs> once staff has presented the case, there will probably be discussions among board members, questions asked. Once we're satisfied, we understand what is being requested. Then I will ask if the applicant is here or someone possibly representing the applicant. If so, and if you would like to give us further information, please come to the lectern. Give us your name and address for the record. Give us the information that you would like for us to take under advisement. Once you have presented the information, or while you are presenting it, there is a possibility there will be questions and discussions among board members and back and forth to try to make sure we understand all the facets of the application. Once we're satisfied we've heard from that side, then I will ask if there are any persons here in support. If so, if you'd like to give us some additional information that we have not received, please come to the lectern and give us your name and address for the record. If we've already heard the information, please don't hammer it with us again. We can remember it. Then I will ask if there are any persons here in opposition or if there's any persons here that might have questions about what is being requested. Again, come to the lecture, give us the information you want or questions that you don't understand. And we will attempt to answer the questions or make sure we understand the opposition. Once we have heard from both sides, normally we will render a decision here today. However, it is within the bylaws. If we feel like information is lacking or questions are not answered, or parties need to talk, then we do have the right to postpone action until the next regular scheduled meeting. Okay, the first case we're going to call is Lowndes County case, DAR 2018-17, Eric Pierce, <coughs> 2187 Madison Highway. <laughs> Ma'am? Uh, oh. Ms. Deborah, it's your show.
which would have caused her a hardship as far as trying to locate and assess her structure in either of those areas. In this, um, in this scenario, Ms. Mary um, had her signing off to construct for her a 224 square feet carport in the front yard. Um, the structure is located uh, approximately about 50 feet from the front yard property line. She also has a cement drive uh, from, from the county's right of way all the way up to her existing mobile home. And she's here today to ask for a variance for the placement of an accessory structure. All right, any questions, any discussion from the board at this time? All right, thank you, Deborah. Yes, sir. Ms. Pearson, is there anything you would like to add? Well, the only thing, you know, I, like she said, I've got to sit and drive all the way up from the road to the front there, and that's why I put the car at the end of it at the front of the trailer. Because all, when it rains all, it gets real wet behind there, and there's a lot of trees by there, and I just, just wasn't worth putting it. I, I didn't know I had to have a permit when I am done it. I thought you only got a permit when you build a room or build a house, and I wouldn't have done it if I'd know the head time, but I didn't know. All right. Any questions? Any discussions? Is anyone else here in support? Anyone here that has any objections or has questions about what's being asked? Was there any contact to your office? Ever? No, sir. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, is there anything else? Any other questions you want to discuss? I assume from the location that you your primary entrance to the, and, and exit from the mobile home is the front door right yes, there. Any other, anybody have any <coughs> questions, any discussions? Can I entertain a motion on this request? I'll make a motion. Go ahead. No, no sorry. Go ahead, I'll <laughs> I make a motion that we approve the variance as submitted signing criteria. I have a motion to grant the request as presented, citing criteria D, Mr. Paul. I have a second from Nancy. Okay, Nancy, second. Okay. <coughs> All in favor, raise a hand, please. Unanimous. Good luck with it. Hope it keeps you dry. So, what I have to do now, go get the permit or what? <coughs> oh, oh, I'll check that one. I have to do all of this. Okay, next case that we're going to call, or I'll call, is City Case Application 2018-07, Dixie Rosebush, 990 North St. Augustine Road. Good afternoon. Miss Tracy, it's your show now. Thank you. This variance request pertains to signs for our new cookout that is on at 990 North St. Augustine Road.
directional, as pictured on the left, the free sitting sign that we're talking about, the variance for is on the right. So the free, the directional is on the left. I have parameters for directional, so many for entrance, so many for for the location. This particular directional is a little bit taller and a little bit bigger than what I see. Directionals can't be any taller than 255, and then why is it a very strong? This particular directional is six feet tall rather than two and a half feet tall, and eight square feet in size, bigger than the three square feet maximum. So that's the directional variance. The last variance is for many boards. They are having too many boards. They can have as many mini boards as they would like, but there is a cumulative of 48 square feet. The two mini boards together are a total of 59.62 square feet. So they're about 11 and a half ish over what I can put in the So three signs, variance of pertaining to those three particular signs. They already have signs. I permitted what I could while signing to the <coughs> directionals. So that's the chose for how to date. They chose to go forward with those while they were going through the variance process. Um, Staff reviewed the case, didn't find any hardship, so we recommend it not. Any questions? Ms. Hawkins. A lot of questions. Okay. Okay. What happens? I was reading up here that you permitted certain signage until this application process is over. Once this is over, what happens to what you have permitted so far? It, it was wall signage, and unless they ask for more for additional wall signage, that's not going to be a problem. So they can keep that? Yes, sir. And they have also got permitted for two directionals. If this third directional gets permitted at the location that the channel is not planned, it will be an issue. Okay, and the directional is the one that's got the extra height in it. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, that brings me to this question. What is, why are they requesting or needing, and this may be a question for Mr. Rosebush, why are they needing a six foot by eight square foot in size sign as opposed to what's permitted? Yeah, question. Okay. Um, I was looking at this map of this area where we've already got Steak and Shake, I think that's the name of that other place. Yes, yeah. but um, Asian restaurant. And it looks like, I mean, I know we've got these rules about no more than 300 feet, but when this was established, and this may not be a question for you, but when this was established, they didn't take into account, it doesn't seem like we've got a fair playing field for everybody that's going to be building. Uh, uh, because I was looking at the stake and shake sign, and had it been on the other side of their building, instead of what I think is the west, had it been on the east side, would that have fallen within the 300 feet as opposed to being too close now? And what is to keep one business from deliberately stacking the odds for any future business that may come as to where they put their signage? You're asking some very big questions, very tough questions. To address the issue with distance from another sign, if their sign was proposed to be 50 feet within a, an entrance or an exit that did not have signage already, <coughs> and it was at least 300 feet away from another sign, I could have permitted it. Now, there's only one entrance exit that does not have signage affiliated with it. And I don't have a picture of it, but it's the one at the very southern portion of this complex. Um, it doesn't have any signage. I did not measure to see how close that entrance exit is to the safety check sign. So I can see there is some potential for another sign there, but again, I did not measure to verify that it meets the curriculum of the problem. The second question you kind of touched on, we have a lot of multi-tenant facilities in Valdosta. And I've been 15 years, most of them predate me. When a new facility comes in, they come out with signage to match. They get permitted or they get variances, and their signage happens. 
sometimes things get redeveloped, how parts will work that out. Things that work may be anticipated. We encourage cleaning, but it sometimes hurt all the time. Well, it just looks like from this aerial um, that whoever comes in here <coughs> to fill in these gaps, they're going to be facing the same thing. It, it just doesn't seem like there's a level playing field for all concerned. And I understand totally where you're coming from. When I have new businesses that come through and they're asking about signage, signage, I explain to them what the signage parameters are. We have several complexes that are maxed out in terms of three cent signage. The only way they're going to get additional three cent signage is by one of the very process. And it's it's depressing to them when they find out that a marriage is what they need when they feel like they need a person in time to help them out the business. I wish there was, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what direction they have. Do you ever find that it's so depressing to use your description that it um, prevents them from pursuing it and they go elsewhere? No, she don't do not. Um, I've had discussions with some <coughs> of the over the years I've been here. And I've said, you know, I'm sorry, you're free standing sign at your complex. And the problem most generally happens with complex facilities that are just maxed out in terms of free standing signage. Your free standing sign is already occupied in business X down, down the plate. In order for you to have your own free standing sign, a variance in terms of your appeals is. Nine times out of ten, I end up doing that one where they went together. I signed a business license. They had wall signage. They had banners. They had a complaint on them. They most generally end up pursuing their group and they end up pursuing other signage holders. Whether that's the best answer, but yeah. most of them. Yeah, and there's one more thing that potentially could impact on what you're sort of heading with. At some point, and it may be getting real close, even though it looks like they got a lot of area to cut out for additional out parcels, you're fixing to start to run into parking uh, numbers of parking spots probably. <coughs> so to some degree that's going to hinder them as much or more as signage. And yeah, just like you're talking about, they could go on to the south end and get on the other side of uh, State and Shape, whatever they were going to put in there, shoe store or whatever, and put something and they've got an entrance down there that they could get a, a freestanding sign on that entrance. And yeah, it would probably be at least 300 feet from State and Shape to the other one. But if you try to go west from the building that they're constructing and cut out another chunk, you're probably going to run out of parking space. And they don't, not only are they going to be hollering, we need a variance for sign, but they're going to be hollering, we need a variance for parking. What is the height of the building? Is it about 20 feet? Tracy, if you if you remove the issue about location and the distance from the existing sign, would this sign be permittable based upon the size? Is it within the requirements for size? It does. No. Size and height for not an issue. And if if this variance is not granted, would cookout be without a sign on at the at the front along St. Augustine? Yes. 
they, are there any other options for them? There would be options to change out a panel at the previous or the existing signs. They could change out a panel at any one of those existing signs. Or we could explore the possibility of a sign at the other entrance. They could change out a panel in the stake and shake sign? No, the big sign, the main sign. I mean, that, if, if, if Steak and Shake, if Steak and Shake said, yes, we'll give you lower well, Oh, yeah, yeah, if they negotiated with Steak yeah. and Shake, they could they can, right. They could change out the panel on any one of those signs. But by, by right, it gets out of the Do they have the right <laughs> to, to force the owner of those signs to, to let them change out the panel? That is between them and the landlords and the businesses. From a city standpoint, yes, sir. Uh, that that is an option. Have you had any um, any com Have you received any comments from State and Shake? Have they? And is there any option to shift the sign further down to the west? Is there is there any other option rather than to keep it? Having, essentially, what you're going to have, if you grant this variance, you're going to have you know a cookout sign on one side and a State and Shake sign right on the other side of the entrance. Mm -hmm. What, what I just see some potential for one blocking out the other. Is there any <coughs> option to shift the cookout sign down to the western edge of the parcel? Yeah, two things. It has to be within 50 feet of the entrance exit. The other exits, except for one, already have signage within that 50 feet. So the only other option, potentially, with no barrier. Because I did not measure how close the second check sign is to this particular entrance exit, is to move their sign to that. I mean, entrance exit. You know, there's, there's one other option, unless I'm wrong, and I think it's within the power of this board if they wanted to word it that way. Right now, the variance request on that sign is because it's within. 90 feet. The variance is 90 feet, 300 less 210, because next to the state ship. If they move this sign 90 feet west, that towards meets Kansas, towards Kansas Express. If they go 90 feet that way, it meets the 300 feet. But now they would need a variance for the 50 foot. Within 50 foot of and, the end. And we didn't advertise that, so we can't. And, and well, I don't know. And uh, <clears throat> so again, it falls within the authority of this board to do that kind of stuff. And I don't know that it has to be advertised because it was determined here at the board during the open meeting. But I'm not the lawyer. I got any feeling for that? I think we've got uh, this board has authority to condition approval of variance requests. And the question would be: Is that a condition of the current variance request, or would that be a separate, a wholly separate variance request? Well, that, that's what I'm saying because it was not advertised, but it was discussed and handled in open meeting. Even though we don't have a monster audience, would that suffice or would we have to postpone and re-advertise if that was what they would <coughs> like to do if it potentially looked like the variance might be might not be requested for the 90 foot and i understand what you're talking about is if you had more space between the two signs you'd have less blockage one blocking the other from the directions and, and the variance you're talking about is what Panda Express, right? That's how no. they got their sign there. Isn't it the 50 foot from the entrance variant? We have Panda Express, <coughs> and we also have another entrance on North St. Augustine Road that has this sign in the middle of it. The other concern here is there might not be the space to move the sign farther down given the distance right away from the curb edge, you know, you might be requiring them to tear out a parking space and build an island 
out there just in order to put a sign on it. Right. Now, I'm not saying that that is the best idea. I'm just saying that is a possibility. Right. We, we did that several, several years ago. It was something similar to this. And in order to, the, the biggest problem there is they didn't want to be as close. There was an objection. They didn't want their sign because it was going to block this sign. And we actually sort of gerrymandered it a little bit and modified the the variance slightly. But anyway, that's just just for discussion. <coughs> any other questions, any other discussions? Um, if if the board agreed to a sign and yet dropped it down a little bit so that it may not be quite as high as they can show it, but they still had a had signage there at the road. Is that an option? That's a possibility as well. But it's only variances for an additional sign within an additional sign or a future <coughs> exit and this was why we said check sign. Right now we're proposing a sign that's about 75 square feet, about 24 feet tall. And how tall is that panda sign? It, that I don't know. That I don't know. I think it met because I don't recall the very It met home. The only thing that the panda express asked for very strong was being 50 feet from the entrance exit because it was, there is no entrance right there because of the grounds and obviously right. So that was the only variance it asked for. Um, multi tenant can be no taller than, no larger than 125 square feet, no taller than 34 feet in height. I'm not good at estimating, so I have to have a visual to see, to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's why I keep asking you this. <laughs> Is the concern of the two signs right next to each other or that Steak and Shake might get angry? Oh no. I mean, Steak and Shake, that would have no effect, but maybe it would be um, help on the aesthetics. And I don't see where coming to the west side of this business is going to work with the proximity it is to the exit and entrance of the whole area. I understand that. And maybe it would be more tolerable to have something still visible, but shorter. Any other questions, any other discussions? We haven't talked anything about menu board. We haven't talked anything about the direction sign other than the size. Anybody want to? Well, I have some questions about that, but I thought I'd wait till our applicant comes. Okay, good enough. All right, thank you, Tracy. Is there anything you would like to add, sir? Yes, sir. You don't want My name is Richie Rosebush. I am uh, president of Learning Signs. I built signs for cookout restaurants, Saxby's restaurants, other places. <coughs> um, I can answer any questions y'all have. I think the best thing to say is, is of the three variants that we are asking for, two of them are because this cookout is unique, um, because it has two drivers. Uh, and that is specifically why the directional sign is six feet tall rather than the, the let me back up, the, the, the signs we got permitted are the signs not on the buildings that cook it out for a chamber and barbecue. That's what we do. And then the directionals are the small directions that say internet exit. They're going to get people in and out of the driveways. So you come in this exit, you go out that or come in this entrance, go out that exit. Those are the ones we got permitted, we haven't sold. The directional that we're asking the variance for is mounted in the middle of an island because as, as cars come in and they turn the corner and realize it's a double drive through. The two foot is not really ideal because you can't necessarily see it from your car or your pickup truck. So that's why the sign is uh, six feet tall and it says double drive through and use either line. So that's what that, that, that explains why we're asking for a variance which is uh, pretty significant from what you allow on the directional sign, but there's a reason behind it. It's, it's so people when they're pulling, they know which way to go and then when they get to the the yield portion they can go into your drop. I have um, a question now. Yes, I have one of my questions is about this sign. Will I be able to see this sign from <coughs> No way. And 
Um, do we imagine that people don't know how to use a double drive through? Like every McDonald's in the world has a double drive through. We you, know it's you, a short line. You would be surprised. Uh, yes, I, I, I agree with you. Um, my, my, thought, my thought process is common sense. I mean, you can figure it out. But you would be surprised in this business uh, of what you see people do in, uh, uh, in drive Um So, so they, put, they put that there. It's reflective, the, 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 the graphics on it. The sign is not illuminated, but the graphics themselves are um, reflective like a stop sign. So when people come at night, this cookout's open. I think this was open at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, they, they can see it in, in, in branch. Um, can, can, can you flip to the, the diagram of the site, the site plan? So we've got a sign called out here that says preview board, but the, the, the there's preview. two mini boards called out and the preview board called out. I'm not seeing where this directional sign is called out. Gotcha. The, the preview board is actually something that was on the plans that they mixed. Uh, they they don't have a preview. Can you show okay. us where the sign is going to be? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. It's not drawn on our truck. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. You want to talk? Sure. Yeah, it's invisible, man. I, I so you, as the cars come around right here, they pull into here, there's this concrete island right here. The sign is mounted right there in the island. So as, they, as, as cars pull around, as they make the turn, they can see that and then they can go this way or that. And that's the back of the side, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, of the three variances that we're asking for, that's the one that Cookout can do without. Uh, the, the most, I should say. Uh, <coughs> if we had to rank them in terms of priority, that was, that was at the bottom of the totem pole. Um, the menu boards, um, I know you're allowed 48 square feet for menu boards. I'm sure when that provision was written, the majority of menu boards they don't have double drive throughs. Each menu board is just under 30 square feet. Now, we looked, prior to even asking for a variance, we looked at cutting the menu board down to 24 square feet each. I don't know if you've ever been to a cookout, they have more menu items than any restaurant. I mean, it takes forever to order because you don't know what you're looking for. Um, there's no way to, to fit all their menu items onto a 24 square foot menu board. It's just, just no way to do it. So, of the, the 48 allowed, we're just asking for 11 more square feet to split amongst the two. Um, now, <coughs> y'all have any questions about the menu boards? Anybody got questions for a menu um, board or the direction? I have a question, and this might be for, excuse me, for Tracy. On this sign that points you in two different lanes, Tracy, don't we have multiple fast food places? I'm not a big fast food don't we have multiple places with double lines eating? And how high are those signs? Most of, most of what is out there now with double drive throughs either was permitted before the only one came with that. Or what has been permitted after the only one came with that. And what is cut for high? Or
And as a general rule, directionals are normally seen at entrances. Right. And you rarely see a directional in this kind of situation. And in all honesty, in this situation, the printed part is facing the back of the building. So if you're driving down the highway, you're not going to see it, one, because it's way back there. And number two, you're going to see the back of the sign. It's just going to be a solid color. I see a lot of folks, and I get a lot of questions about folks who want to put drive through this way, paint it on the asphalt of the parking lot. Or they have arrows guiding you wherever on the parking lot, which does not be permanent. Which does not be permanent. Any other questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, this pertains to the big sign out front. Yes, sir. And since I haven't been able to get this question answered, you're a sign man. What is your estimate of the height of the stage and shade sign? I think the stage and shade sign is supposed to be pretty tall. And what is the panda one? I think from the panda, depending on which. Uh, <coughs> Every, every place to do counties and cities, road grade, that sort of thing. But I would say from where the pole comes out of the ground from the top of the sun, I would think they max that sign just because it's sitting in a hole. I would think that from the ground to the top of that sign is 35. The sign that we're proposing just because we we knew we had to uh, apply for the variance. And we knew the state and shape would come into play. We decided to, to not maximize what we could go for. But the 35 foot tall sign or 125 square feet, we actually went for a 24 foot tall sign at 75 square feet to maybe get it under and just say, hey, look, we just want something. So you, y'all were doing what I was asking earlier about maybe dropping your sign a little bit. Now, in, in, in full disclosure, I have not pulled the tape on the uh, state check sign. I don't, I do not know with, with the exact measurement of what that sign was, but I would think most places, it, it, if it's taking shapes like Pan Express or my Zaxby's customers or Domino Duras, they, they, they try to maximize their time. And they usually don't come in and just, you know, I don't want to just, we'll just stir around this <coughs> item. They usually try to get as much as they can. I have a question about the uh, signage that's on the building, which is already permitted. That's only on the front or it's on the front and the side? It's on the front and the side, yes. Okay, awesome. Any other questions or discussions? Have you considered what we were talking about earlier with shifting, potentially shifting the sign down? I, I think Cookout would be okay with moving the sign down. Uh, the only issue there would be, um, I think initially when they did all their grading and all their electrical, they've already run power out there. I think there would, it would be an expense to try to either figure out a way to cut cut the pavement or the asphalt, because I think that's already been done. But uh, I, think, I think Cookout would be open to doing something like that just because they want the sign. How would how would doing something like that affect? It looks like there's an entrance and exit right here, kind of on the western end. Where, where, where the signs <laughs> located doesn't necessarily affect as long as it's on uh, St. Augustine Road mm -hmm. for visibility to, to compete with their competition, which is State Street and Penn Express and Alton Road and everybody else. As long as they have visibility, I don't think Cookout's too concerned if it's. If it's uh, where, where it's shown on the site plan or if it's on the property and it's moved up to an express, I think they'd be okay with that. Um, matter of fact, I know that they, they told me, they said, give us a sign. We need a sign. Tracy, is there a distance that a sign base or pole um, has to be off of off the right of way line? Or it has to be at least five feet. At least five feet. Mm -hmm. Is that from the base or is that from the edge of the sign? The edge of the sign. Like a monument type base, that has to be at least five feet off the right of way. But with this pole sign being, it's 180 inches wide. Yeah. And the pole being in the middle, so it's it'd be four and a half feet to one, to one side. The, the whole signage, including the rectangle <coughs> portion of the signage, the entire sign has to be at least five feet off the right of way. Right. The, the, the box up top right. has to be five feet from the right of way. But I, I know I found that out. The hard way with my sign. <laughs> <laughs> is there any overhead electric or anything in there that would? Good question. <clears throat> there is. There's a pole. 
right there on the corner called on your site plan. Is, is the, let me ask this question, is the moving of the sign is, is the main thing, the, the distance from a, uh, or is it just the block or neighbor the state shape? Because if it is, we could even go lower, we could go to 20 feet if that's the case, rather than move it, if at all possible. Well, my concern, I think, is twofold, blocking of the state shape sign, and then also just clustering of sure. many signs right there, and it doesn't seem as if a long, St. Augustine, that's really, that's really done. It seems like there's more space right. between the signs. But you know, also playing into this is the fact that the state state hasn't opposed the variance request. And right. It's properly advertised, and they're not here. So. Right. Uh, this, this is not the proper time to ask that, but the state and state contact office and anything about this. Any other questions, discussions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. And we have no other persons here unless they're in ghostly attire. Uh, Hank's for uh, Halloween. And you just said, Stacy Shakes, has anybody else contacted you? No calls. <coughs> Any other discussions, ladies and gentlemen? Freestanding sign meets height and square footage. We just got to decide 90 foot variance and leave it where it is or whatever other choice you might want. It has been put on the table by Mr. Bush, Road Bush, I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, that if you feel like we need to slice a, a foot or two off, we sound amicable to that. The freestanding. I mean, the uh, directional sign, it's open to most anything that whoever wanted to make the motion. And the menu boards, if he had one menu board instead of two, if he had one lane instead of two, he'd be within compliance on that. It's just when you ask the second one, he's slightly out of bounds. So, anybody making a motion? Go with I make a motion to approve the variance that would be an additional sign at the entrance that is within 300 feet of another sign. But we let him have the freestanding sign at the size and height that he has. That we reject the directional sign that says use two lanes. And that we um, approve the cumulative total for the drive through signage. Um, of 11 feet. Um, and I think that he does actually have a hardship on that parcel. I think that because it was developed before we had these rules, um, that there was a hardship that we're satisfying. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do I need to restate it? Everybody understand it? I have a second from Nancy. Any other discussion before I vote? All in favor, please raise a hand. Unanimous, good luck with it, sir. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have approval of the minutes from last month. I looked at them, didn't see anything I had problems with. Anybody else see any typos, additions, deletions, corrections? Can I get a motion to accept the minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. I have motion. I have a second. Second. I have a second. All in favor, raise a hand. Unanimous. Thank you very much. And now the real problem that we've got to deal with. Nominations of chair and vice chair for 2019. Why, why, why do we have to do this now? Don't we usually do this the next month and in December? Well, I'm not real sure why, but it was suggested that we put it on this month to give everybody a little <coughs> time to think about it, maybe. Uh, we won't actually vote on it until the December meeting, so. Okay, so we put it on. So if, if y'all, you know, whatever's done, if you decide we don't like whatever it is, we still, we can undo it. We just open the nominations back up. 
Yes. So your chair in Mac is last year, is that right? Right. And, and why did you bring this up as a problem? Why is this a problem? I didn't know it. Because every time it comes up, I always say, now look, I've been doing this a long time. If you don't feel like somebody else needs to do it, if you want some fresh blood, if you want different views or whatever, I'm all for it. Yeah, I, <coughs> Are you trying to say you'd like to become a voter? Well, I can <laughs> contemplate <laughs> doing that. <laughs> But no, I, I, you know, if, if y'all want me to do it again, I will be glad to do it again. If y'all want somebody else to do it, my feelings are not hurt. My sentiments are the same. And I, so, after saying all that, the floor is open for nominations for chair and vice chair for 2019. Would y'all be willing to swap places? Matt could be the chair, Alan could be the vice chair? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm here to serve. So y'all doesn't, doesn't matter. Totally Whatever you pleasure is. <coughs> I think y'all do a good job. Um, I like how it is. I'm not opposed to switching it up to Is that a nomination? For? I, I nominate Mr. Strickland as chair and Mac as vice chair. I have nomination. For me to return and back to return in same capacity. Any other nominations? I, I nominate the, the opposite. Back <laughs> <laughs> to be the chairman and I'll be the vice chair. That's the trouble he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, Everybody knows me, I'm trouble. That's right. Well, so now we have some time to think about that. But, right? Well, okay, let me put it this way. At this point, Will anybody, you know, are there any other, not any third nomination combination? Okay, I need motion to close nominations. I'll make a motion to close nominations. Awesome. I have a motion to close and I have a second to close. So the slate to be thought about as you just heard, and it will not be voted on until the December meeting, so if anybody has anything, all I would need for any kind of a change to either one of any kind is a motion to reopen nominations at the November meeting. And if that motion is <coughs> put out and seconded, then the nomination would be reopened to whatever. Otherwise, that would be the slate to pick from in December. Okay. Any new business, any old business? We stand adjourned, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your attention and attendance. <laughs> Thank you.